Hey guys, what's going on? Jamie Soriano here from Long Island, New York, and I just wanted to cut this really short video um, to kind of piggyback off the video that I recorded and posted a little bit earlier. Earlier today, I posted a video on my channel. You can actually go check it out where I talk about Control Finance taking down their Facebook page, uh, their Twitter page. Um, I believe they took down their YouTube channel as well. And at the time earlier today, the, uh, the control website, um, website, the control finance website, excuse me, the control, it's been a long day. The control finance website was still up and a couple of people on YouTube were hoping, hoping to, um, you know, recoup their investment and still, you know, they were still hoping for the best and crossing their fingers and hoping that control finance would still pay. Um, apparently there was a letter sent out to, a, to, a lot of the members, if not all of the members that said that they were, you know, halting their payments for whatever reason, but because they wanted to keep the integrity, keep their integrity and keep their good name, they wanted to um, continue to make these payments. And, you know, uh, a couple of YouTubers were, were, were making a couple of videos about it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 10, 12 PM Eastern. I actually jumped online real quick and just for uh, just for the hell of it, I went to controlfinance.com, and this is the website right here. Control Finance. I'm gonna just refresh it, see if. Yep, still the same thing. It says here the site cannot be reached. It certainly seems like they have uh, pulled the website down. You know, so once they pulled down all their social media pages. It was just a matter of time before they pulled their their website down, and I had um I had someone you know comment on my last video saying, well, you know they sent out this letter, say that they were gonna you know continue to pay because they wanted to, their members to make their money and they wanted to keep their integrity, and I replied back just uh, kind of saying that that was the typical BS that admins of these HYPs give out to kind of um you know, to kind of give a, an answer and really having no intention of paying out, you know, Gladia coin did the same thing you know, a couple of months ago, Gladia coin, they, uh, you know, they had stopped paying, you know, they, it was just a debacle that happened over there. And all of a sudden people were, people who were making, you know, 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a day over there, all of a sudden, you know, Gladia coin, um, you know, they were kind of enforcing this forced admin fee of 5% or 10%. I don't even know what it was, but it was some ridiculous number. And obviously people didn't want to pay. So people stopped promoting it. And obviously when you don't have anybody going into the program, they no longer have money to pay out for the program because they're really not trading, right? Let's face it. They're not trading. And so they, they had sent out you know, a couple of emails saying, Hey, you know, we're going to make sure that everybody recoups their, at least their initial investment. Um, and then the same thing happened where one day, you know, you just try to log onto their site to see what's going on and boom, this is what happens. Their site is no longer on the server uh, and it's gone. And the same thing happened to control finance. And the reality is every single one of these HYIPs, at some point, this is going to happen, right? Because, you know, these HYIPs really cannot sustain themselves long term. They're really, you know, there really is a shelf life to all these programs. And you just have to be smart enough, savvy enough to say, you know what? Okay, either I'm going to stay out of this space because it's just too stressful and I don't want to be thinking about this all day long, every minute of my day. Or you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to go in here and I'm going to have a strategy. And I always tell people there's three cardinal rules, okay, that you need to live by if you're going to be participating in this space, okay, this HYIP crypto online space. Now, again, there are some programs that are just straight out sketchy and scammy and it's just really a joke, right? Like there's this laser, laser dot finance or something like that. I mean, I think it's like 12% a day. I mean, come on, that is, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, that is not sustainable whatsoever. I mean, it obviously it's just a straight up Ponzi, right? Um, and then there are programs that, you know, m seem to be a little bit more legit, 
you know, they're obviously, um, maybe they're more transparent. They look like they have a, a more sustainable model and who knows, maybe they, you know, will last longer than most of these programs, but you need to be smart enough to say, you know what, hopefully this program lasts long enough, but I'm going to, I'm going to go in with a strategy. Okay. And the three things that I always tell people, if they're going to get involved with these programs, there, there is a lot of money to be made in this space, but you need to go in smart enough. Um, and having a strategy, like a clear strategy that you're going in with, um, and that you make a decision that you're not going to get caught up in the hype and you're not going to, get greedy and you're just going to stay level headed and level headed enough to, you know, pull your strategy off. And the number one thing you want to do first and foremost is never put money in that. You're not afraid to lose that. You're not okay to lose. Okay. It's like going to Atlantic city or going to Las Vegas, you know, go up. Sometimes you go in there with a thousand dollars and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to go have some fun. Not looking to make money. If I lose this money, it's not going to make or break me. I'm just going to go have a blast with this thing. Right. And you kind of have to have that same attitude with, you know, these programs. Never put more money than you're that you're okay to lose because you never know. You never know when these programs are going to go disappear. Okay. Now, obviously, if you get in on the front end of a program, the likelihood of it disappearing before you get your seed money out, you know, you'll have a better chance, right? If you're catching a program on the back end, and even sometimes, you know, even if you do catch something on the front end you never really can't tell, right? You never really can't tell. So always put money in that you're okay to lose. Number two is always pull your seed money out before you start compounding. You know, so many people, they're like, oh, I want to just compound my account. And I get it. I understand, okay? Because obviously, the, you know, compounding is, you know, a very, very powerful thing. But pull your seed money out first. Pull your seed money out first. Okay. And then compound, compound with, you know, if you pull your seed money out first and then all you have inside the platform is house money, then you can compound that house money out, right? You can, that's like play money. That's just, that's pure profit. You pulled out your initial capital. Um, and I always tell people, look, if, it, if the program goes down, is it going to suck? Yeah, it's still going to suck, right? Especially if you're making money with it. But at the very least, you pulled out your initial seed money, right? Your initial capital, you pulled it out and you were able to recoup at the very least that money, right? So pull your, pull your, pull your seed money out. Then you start compounding from then. Number three is have I, have a diversified portfolio, have at least five programs that you're dealing with. Because again, you never know, you never know, you never can tell what's going on. You know, even the more legit programs, challenges happen, right? I mean, the, the other a couple of weeks ago, Genesis Mining, who, you know, I, I mine Bitcoin out of Genesis. I mine some altcoins out of Genesis also. Genesis Mining has been around for three years. They have over half a million customers. They're a, they're a legit company. They're not an HYIP. They're not a Bitcoin doubling program. They're, a, you know, they're a real cloud mining program, right? But they got hacked. Well, you know, allegedly, right? <laughs> allegedly, they got hacked. And for a couple of days, they stopped paying. And then after that, once they started paying a couple of days, it was like every two days or every three days, you know, just recently they just started doing daily pay again. And I guess they started to straighten their stuff out. But look, even a legit deal like that. Now, again, obviously they, they can't control if they get hacked or not. Now they can put some security measures. But who knows? Who knows if it was really a hack or, you know, I've seen some videos where people say, well, it wasn't a hack. It was, you know, you know, this or that. Who knows? Who, kn who knows? But when you have your risk spread out over five programs, five good programs, not five ridiculous, sketchy, scammy, HYP, 10% a day, 15% a day bullcrap programs. I'm talking about get good, good you know, do your due diligence and get good programs and spread your risk over five of those. And if something happens to one of them, right, if who knows, right, if something happens, you didn't have all your eggs in one basket. That's the key. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, you know, this is a learning experience. This is a learning lesson. And, you know, for me, you know, I always practice those three rules, right? 
and I do my due diligence and I do my research. I don't get involved with every program out there. I do my due diligence. I try to get involved with the more sustainable models, right? If you want to know what those, the five programs that I deal with, I'm not going to go into it in this video because this is more of a video on control financing. Really, the lessons you can learn from this ex debacle, right? This experience. <laughs> but if you want to know the programs that I've aligned myself with, go to the description box underneath this video. You can go through some of those links. You know, I've done a lot of research and I've handpicked the programs that I deal with. But even then, I still practice never putting more money than I can, than I'm okay to lose, pulling my seed money out first, and diversifying into at least five programs. Because I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way, okay? That Gladia coin debacle, I lost thousands of dollars in that deal, okay? And then jumped into a program called eCoin, right? Because I didn't know any better. And, you know, I had some partners of mine that were that said, hey, man, you know, this Gladio coins down. Let's jump into this one. Lost a couple thousand on that one. And then the last one was JetCoin, where lost a couple on that, right? And I said, you know what? Something's going on here. There's a pattern here, right? And I had to step back. And I said, you know what? This is why this is going on. And I'm not going to follow these people anymore. I'm not going to work with these people anymore. They're, they're doing, you know, they're jumping into different programs, but it's really the same program. Bitcoin doubling binary, you know, double your Bitcoin in 90 day bull crap. I had to sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to go do my research and due diligence on real programs or at least more sustainable, more transparent programs. But I had to learn the hard way. Same thing that happened with control finance. This happened to me three times. Okay. <laughs> so I know your pain. Okay. I know your pain. You got to use this as a learning experience. Um, and then just move forward from it. But yeah, it certainly looks like control finance has exit scammed officially. Um, because this is what you get when you go to controlfinance.com. This is what you get when you go to, you go to, you know, the website. So kind of sucks. Not gonna lie, it sucks. I mean, thankfully for me personally, I didn't have any, I didn't have any holdings in this platform. Didn't invest one penny into this platform because, you know, I took a look at it. I, I mean, I really did take a good look at this program, and I was going to, but you know, once I saw, you know, the, they had fake testimonials from actors from Fiverr.com. I mean, come on. I mean, that's indicator number one. Now. I know a lot of you guys might have seen that and said, you know what? Well, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just going to go into it anyway, you know, because you got caught in the hype. And again, this is a learning lesson, a learning experience where you got to understand that, you know, hype, you got to be able to step back and think clearly and not get caught into, you know, the hype of what's going on. Okay. Um, and again, I'm not against hype. You know, hype is good. You know, hype is, you know, I'm a marketer, right? I understand the power of hype. Uh, but you got to be able to step back and say, you know what, is this, does this really, really make sense? What does my gut tell me about this program? And so, uh, yeah, control finance officially exit scammed and, um, you know, people have to pick up the pieces, you know, it sucks. It sucks. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to lie. It sucks for people and feel bad for them. Um, but yeah, you just got to learn from it and you just got to move forward or, you know, don't play in the space because this is not the first program that is, you know, this happened to, and it's certainly not going to be the last. So that being said, you know, uh, I will catch you on the next video. Jamie Soriano here from Long Island. Peace.